<clears throat> Mr. Speaker, I rise today to call for the immediate and unconditional release of Nabil Rajab, the prominent Bahraini human rights defender who remains in custody in Bahrain after being arrested a year ago. He's currently being detained in a hospital. Nabil is a leading human rights activist known across the region and beyond for his peaceful views. His work is internationally recognized and he has won several major human rights awards. Nabil has been unjustly imprisoned several times since 2011 when he participated in protests against the government of Bahrain and joined calls for democratic reform. In April 2015, he was arrested following tweets criticizing the Saudi-led coalition airstrikes in Yemen and the treatment of detainees in Bahrain's job prison. He was released after three months, but prosecutors ordered his rearrest in June of 2016. He's being held on numerous charges and is on trial in two separate cases for his human rights work. If convicted on all charges, he would face up to 18 years in jail. So what kinds of charges are we talking about? He's accused of insulting national institutions, spreading, spreading tendentious rumors, and offending a foreign country. In other words, he's accused of exercising his right of freedom, uh, his right to freedom of speech. Last December, a court ordered Nabil's release on bail, but he was immediately rearrested for making, quote, false or malicious statements uh, in TV interviews where he criticized Bahrain's refusal to allow journalists and human rights groups access to their country. I've experienced that, by the way. In August of 2014, I was denied permission to visit Bahrain with Brian Dooley, who works for Human Rights First. Since his arrest last year, Nabil has undergone two operations, suffered heart palpitations and required emergency medical care and developed other medical conditions. After the first operation, he was returned to prison with an open wound and had to be rushed back to the hospital three days later to treat the resulting infection. His trials have been postponed more than a dozen times since his arrest last year, most recently yesterday. Nabil has spent most of the last 10 months in solitary confinement after the New York Times published an op-ed by him last September. In that piece, Nabil urged the Obama administration to use its leverage to resolve the conflict in Yemen instead of fanning the flames by supplying arms uh, to the Saudi coalition. A second New York Times piece by Nabil appeared just last month on May 17th, where he urged the Trump administration to review its relations with author authoritarian regimes like Bahrain. And I request unanimous, unanimous consent to enter these two articles uh, into the record so this House can see for itself the kinds of opinions that the Bahraini government considers so dangerous. Under, uh, under Obama, the State Department repeatedly called on Bahrain to release Nabil and drop the charges against him. It also tied the sale of F-16s to Bahrain's uh, to, to, uh, to, to Bahrain to improve to improvements in human rights. In contrast, the new administration has lifted the hold on the F-16 sales and failed to call for Nabil's release. When President Trump met with the King of Bahrain on May 21st, he told him, we're going to have a very, very long-term relationship. I look forward to it very much. Many of the same things common, uh, that was Trump's quote. Uh, I'm not sure what the president had in mind, but let's review what's happened in Bahrain this year. On January 5th, the govern government restored arrest and investigation powers to its national security agency, notorious for torturing detainees in 2011. This reverses one of the few security sector reforms outlined in the Bahrain Independent Commission of Inquiry that the government carried out. On January 15th, Bahrain carried out its first execution since 2010, killing three men who were allegedly tortured into making false confessions. On February 21st, Bahrain's constitution was amended to allow military courts to try civilians. On May 31st, the government dissolved the secular opposition political party, Wa'ad, and it was the last major opposition party still operating in the country after Al-Wafaq party was dissolved last summer. On June 4th, the government ordered al wasat the country's only independent newspaper, to be suspended indefinitely. Mr. Speaker, Bahrain is headed down an increasingly authoritarian path. It is closing off all avenues for peaceful dissent. But the President of the United States does not get it. Could that have to, could that have to do with the income he earned when the Bahraini government held its National Day celebration at Trump International Hotel last December? What I know is that appearances matter, and Bahrain is an increasingly volatile, dangerous place for our, our country, for our military, for our military personnel. We should not enable the Bahraini government's repression. 
I call for the immediate and unconditional release of Nabil Rajab and all others jailed for their peaceful political views. And I urge the Trump administration to join me. I thank my, my, uh, my colleagues for listening, and I yield back the balance of my time. Without objection, the gentleman's request to insert materials into the record is granted.